it's not a ray guys it's something huge i'm guessing spotfin croaker or if i'm really lucky a white sea bass oh my god ghost you guys look at this guy i'm gonna wash him off this one's a keeper for sure 32 inch white sea bass man and obviously it's an outside hope because i know they're around here but um always feel lucky to get one and so All right, guys, how's it going? So I'm here with my friend Chris, and Chris is actually, I actually went to high school with Chris, 23 years, so I'm very grateful to have kept in touch. And uh, Chris is an offshore fisherman, does a lot of tuna fishing. So I caught this white sea bass. I don't know a single thing about filleting fish, so Chris is gonna help me out and lend his expertise. So we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, Chris, is there anything you wanna add before we get going? Uh, let's try not to screw this up. <laughs> Only one take. There we go, yeah. sounds good. All right, all right, guys. Good. <laughs> All right, so we got the fish in the cooler. We're gonna open up the cooler and check it out. I am going to grab my gloves so you see what else we have set up. Got table, knife, some heavy duty gloves. Let's see, I actually haven't opened this yet. Let's see what this thing looks like. Hey, that looks perfect. One thing that I like over time is to not fillet it immediately. If you let the meat rest, we have found that uh, the meat actually is a little bit nicer if you wait a couple days. As long as you don't break the skin and just keep it on ice, the meat is, can be really good. I mean, you go on, you know, eight day trips, 10 day trips, the fish is gonna be in the hold soaking around anyway. So, let's check it out. There she is. Very nice white sea bass, Benji. Thank you. Great job. From the surf. Yeah, <laughs> that's even better. Okay, let's take a good look at this thing. White sea bass scales are enormous, and the bigger the fish, the bigger the scales. And these things, if you fillet enough of them, they're gonna dull your knife. So when I cut, I always have the sharp edge of the blade pointing out so I can push the scales off the meat instead of having to cut through every single scale. So I'll show you what that really means. So whenever I make a cut, I poke, and then I push the knife like this, so the scales kind of just fall off the meat instead of me having to saw through every scale all up and down. So it's pretty much just like cutting a tuna or a yellowtail or a dorado. So I'll make a collar cut like so. And then this is where you see all the scales right there, right? These things can get pretty big when you get like a 50 pounder. And these things look like little manhole covers. All right, so let's try to cut it like so. You can see the scales getting just pushed off the meat and it's a lot easier on your knife. All right, and then I make another cut. Now that skin's broken, like so. So that'll separate your shoulder loin from the rack. And then we come down here don't really want anything to do with these two fins the way out. So I'm not gonna take the slab off of the rack because invariably what happens is you take one slab off and then the head is still on. You flip it over and you try to cut the other slab. The head makes the whole rack sit at a curve and it's hard to get a straight cut to make it look nice. So I leave that slab on and I start working on the other side. So, all right, boom. All right. Okay, so. I mean, there's no really no super duper surprise with these fish. The ribs are where they're gonna be, just like fish that you've cut already, if you're watching this. Okay, so here's a trick that I, I sometimes like to try for fish of this size. It'll work on tuna, it'll work on yellowtail. You take the hind portion of it, you poke a hole like that. Right, because you're usually gonna split the top and the from bottom anyway, so cutting that doesn't really do much. Then you use this, you put your finger in here, you lift it up, then you kind of see what you're doing. All 
there you go. Finger hole helps a lot. And I only screwed up a little bit right here. <laughs> All right, put that back. I'll get some sutures and I'll suture this back on, Benji. I'm really sorry. It'll heal. <laughs> Just give, give it time. Okay, so now I did most of the work on this side already. I don't have to worry about making straight cuts. So, finish freeing up the mother-in-law section of the fish. There you go. Now with the head, we'll revisit this, but your work is pretty much done here. You got rack here, rack here. Some people like to keep the rack on to barbecue it bone side down if you want to separate it. You go like this. So this is one nice clean piece. So what do you do with the bones? Uh, bone side down like that. I'm gonna try to go like this and follow them. And there are your bones. And then there's the fillet. You still have a little bit of membrane here that you'll want to clean off, so we'll do that at our own leisure. Okay, so rinse and repeat. Now you have the top loin here, belly right there. And you can trim out the bones that you find down the center line of the rack. And you just do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so there's your rack. There's your fillets, the loins there. Uh, one unique thing that we're gonna set up for in the next little segment of this video is digging the little stones or the otoliths out of the white sea bass. All right, so we'll do that next. All right, there's the collar. Okay, so you still have the gills in here and the guts. Gilling and gutting this thing is pretty much the same as gilling and gutting anything else in the ocean. Oh, <laughs> oh dang! <laughs> Watching at home, you're involved. He's like Captain EO. All right, let's throw all this goo into there. Okay, so we're gonna be looking in here. So <clears throat> you have a, a row of ah, vertebrae at th going up to the skull. If you clean up all this schmoo, you're gonna see a really unique one right here, right there. And then you have the rest of the vertebrae behind it, okay? So you'll notice in here, if you crack this open delicately like an egg, you're gonna find a bunch of clear jelly and two little stones that look like weird teeth, all right? So I'm gonna get set up for that and then uh, we'll get started. Okay, so we're back. Um, I'm gonna try to get this out really carefully without screwing up Benji's stones from his first white sea bass. So I have some dikes, a little small knife. If I have to, I can use a tuna spike to get it started. Gosh, no pressure here, Jesus. I think I will start with the spike a little bit because I can, I think, do the least amount of damage that way. So the gills are gone, all the other stuff is off. So I just start poking around. Ooh. All right. Thanks, just carefully. get a phone call from PETA. <laughs> PETA, if you're watching, address all your complaints to, to Benji. <laughs> okay, you can start to see the little clear gelatin that's in there. All right, so now you can kind of see, I'll move it into the light. 
I think you start to see what I'm talking about. Mm. A little clear jello. Here's one of the otoliths. Here's one. There's two of them in here. I'm gonna try to get one out first so you guys can see. And obviously as the fish gets bigger, these things get bigger too. But yeah, so it kind of comes out looking like a tooth. That's why it's called otolith, which is Latin for dead sea bass. Yeah, you can make jewelry out of these things. Uh, you'd be like Crocodile Dundee and make a little hat. Uh, sometimes people just put them in a, in a jar. Some guys out there have five gallon buckets filled to the rim with these things. The reason why I'm doing this so delicately is because these things are pretty brittle and they can break. And I definitely don't want to break these too because they're special. All right, go to lift number two. Cool. Boom. There you go, Benji. Congratulations on your uh, Let's try, first uh, legal. Here you go. All right, next step, preparing the fillets. Okay. So this is what we got. We got our collar going in the bag. We got our four quadrants of the fish ready to go in the bag, depending on the size of the bag. Close, close enough. Okay, so boom, ready to go into the bag. And then when you're bagging it, always touch skin towards skin or uh, meat towards meat so that it'll make it harder for scales to find themselves on your clean sides. Okay. All right, there you go. The skin is facing towards the inside all the way around. Do you want a filet? Uh, you want to show them the freezer? Huh? You want to show them my freezer? <laughs> It's a white sea bass, though. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. The white sea bass is delicious. I got, I already have some white sea bass in Wahoo uh, in there. So cool. awesome. That'll be great for the fam to enjoy. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that entertaining and helpful. Um, like I said, Chris is an amazing offshore fisherman. Uh, he just slays the tuna. Um, so I'm really grateful for his help. It's always good to stay connected to friends. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a good one. Tight lines.